Now, these Bowlis have a very, very long history. Bowlis were built in the subcontinent as early as the second century AD and continue to be built and utilized till the 19th century. That is till the end of the 1800 and something. They were still being used and still being utilized. But after that, with the coming of the electricity and the coming of the air conditioning systems of various types, their uh, importance gradually declined. And today they are not being used as the purpose was, as the, their purpose was. But today they are now only being used as a place to be visited by the tourists. And some of the Baulis, if you look at their details, I can easily suggest that some of these Baulis can be considered as the, the wonders of the world. I'll show you some of the bodies uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of bodies were being built in the second century. Junagadh is the one place. So there's a flight of steps coming down and a flight of steps coming down. But with the, with the water, there are many, many myths which are associated. So it's been, if you look at the Indian mythology, so from ancient times, the water has been considered as the prime source of life. It's not the Kushakinayak, it's prime source of life. But in the Hindu mythology, it is seen and praised as uh, there is a goddess, is Kanam Ganga. She is very much praised. So Ganga ki badi respect hai. The Rehabi unka ek naam Ganga ke naam par hai. So that is one mythology associated with the religion. Then there is another go other goddess whose name is Varudima. That is also a goddess which resides in the ponds and the sea and everywhere else. So it's a kind of these things, they, it becomes evident that for Hindus, the water of these bowlies or the water in the rivers were very, very important. Water is also important to us also, but in, that, in our case, the association of our water with is religious, with religion, due to the religion not because of any mythology. For example, we have the water of Zamzam. So that is very much religious and the, the whole of religion of Islam or the evolution of the city of Mecca revolve around that. So that is not a mythology. Even this, this is a mythology, the water which is associated with the, with the Hinduism and various gods and goddesses. Now, where, is, where are these uh, bodies were situated? Normally they were uh, situated either uh, or they were connected to a mosque or a temple or a tomb. So that was the most, mostly, was most appropriate place for the building of the body. But sometimes they were also built associated with some of the caravansarais. And some of the bodies in Ahmedabad, the number of bodies are actually in Ahmedabad. We can, call, we can say that Ahmedabad is a city of bodies. And some of these bodies which have been abandoned, they're in bad shape like this. And if you can remember, the Hindus used to build ponds, which, which were known as stepped ponds. They were also kind of bodies, stepped ponds. So Lahore may be as a pond, say, for example, I remember one pond was at the junction of uh, Queen's Road and then Boris Road also. In the lawn, there used to be a stepped pond. There was another pond at the place where now we have the Shema Cinema. I don't know whether Shema Cinema is there or not, but there used to be a pond there that was, that was known as a Rajonka Sthan or something like that. I think that pond is, has also disappeared. And I saw a number of important ponds in other cities also. The Hindus used to construct those ponds not only to celebrate some of their events of mythology, but as a monthly, also, not as, but also as annual rituals. So in this case, we have a bowlie associated with the mosque and these steps are going down to the level of the bowlies and the mosque is here. The Raja, the Raja is from Raja, that is the plural of Raja, not in the word. And then the, this is the picture of the mosque. And that is the Mambarga and this is the condition of the body as you see it today. This body at the Mambarga is under construction, under repairs. And in this case, we have a number of important elements which are associated with the Durga of Nizamuddin Oliya. And these are the details that this is the number one is the Durga of Nizamuddin Oliya, this building with the dome. Then there is tomb of Abdullah Khan, that is, used to be an important minister in the court of the Mughals. 
that is his tomb and the tomb of Muhammad Shah Rangila. Muhammad Shah Rangila, I hope you know who was Muhammad Shah Rangila. It's a small tomb and then the tomb of Amir Khusro, which is quite an important personality. Amir Khusro was here. Then the Princess Jahara and then uh, Jamal Khan of the Masjid. So along with this, there was a Bowli as well. And this is the Bowli that was associated with that complex of the buildings. Everybody, every, everything is in very, very bad shape today. Anyway, I had a chance to live in Gujarat for quite a few years. Actually, when Pakistan was being made, I was in Gujarat. And in Gujarat, there is an area which is known as a Taki. Taki means a small hill. On that, there is a fort of Akbar Badshah. And close to that fort, there is a herme, let's say, hammam of Akbar Badshah. So us may be a bowli thi banyoi. The pani was taken out from that bowli, and then it was heated in those baths. So they say that it was perfect thi wahan ke heating everything. Even uh, there used to be a steam bath also in the bath of Akbar. So that was an element worth seeing. But unfortunately, we don't take much care of our heritage, and so everything has gone to the dogs. Likewise, I remember when uh, we were doing a documentary. On the Shalamar Bagh, uh, this is about 1994-95. So there used to be a bowli in the Shalimar Bagh also. And that bowli had a small rest house with it. And when uh, French traveler Moorcraft came to the subcontinent, I think during the time of the six, he stayed in that bowli. Unfortunately, again, since we are unable to take care of our heritage. So, us bowli ko unhone bandi kar di hai, which may be timidly dark. So, that is totally closed. Closed. That is a very, very sad element of our heritage. And I also learned from various books that underneath uh, a part of the Shalamar Bagh, there used to be a labyrinth. Labyrinth is a maze. Maze is a labyrinth. And what is there? What is a labyrinth or a maze? In Urdu, we call it bool bulaya. So bool bool yeah, I guess it is a yeah, jo shezade or shezade yeah, mostly, yeah, they were chupan chupai khelti the. That was under the Shalamar Bagh, in a portion of under the Shalamar Bagh. So usko bhi ban kar diya because we couldn't maintain it. So these are the sad aspects of the taking care of our heritage, which is very very sad. <laughs> Then the bowlies could be inside the gardens also, but the providing water to the visitors. And this bowly is at the garden of Ferozia Kotla. Ferozia Kotla is yet another name of a city of Delhi, which was built by Ferozia Tughlaq. And Kotla means the city, simply. Kotla is both the other has been Kotla is the court be here, as a Sial court, Amar court, Nama court, etc. And sometimes the Kotla is turned into court, and sometimes it is turned into court. As in Kotli, we do get sir. Kotli. Kotli is a chota Kotla, auto chot Kotli Ojega. Yes, a Kotli Lohara is very famous in Pakistan. So, Lohara ki Kotli. So, ye Kotli, when this goes, this word goes to sin, it becomes a goat, and sometimes it's just a goat. So, these are variations which keep on occurring in normally in all languages. And then we have the Rotas Fort, a great, great monument. Unfortunately, it's very, in very, very bad shape today. And you can see the facade is uh, falling down from various parts. And uh, what happens to our heritage is this, that the government of Pakistan had a fund for national heritage. So its fund was done, so the experts were fund so that the monuments could repair. Now what happened in the case of the Rotas Fort, Fund is dentist ko. Dental surgeon ko funds de diye ke to repair the fort. Just imagine how we deal with our monuments. A dental surgeon ja ke Rotas fort ko thik karega. So this is what happened to the Rotas fort. This is the plan of the Rotas fort. And if you happen to go there, the big, big bowl is over here. And the smaller bowl is over here. And the third bowl is over here. Why so many bodies? Because it's a huge area. It's not a very small fort. It is almost a town inside. So if you go there it is too big to, to travel. And it has two main parts. One is the royal portion and the other is the common man portion. Because the army used to stay here as uh, Sheikh Shah Suri was fighting against the in his, uh, against his enemies, which were Gakkhad. So Gakkhad was fighting against the enemies. 
in order to fight against the gakkars they built the stones so as you are ultimately he was assassinated by these gakkars and this is the picture of the body going down and then uh, half way we come across certain bridges like this in this picture you see a bridge here a bridge here and a bridge here now what is the function of these bridges the number of bridges is 1 2 3 4 you can see in this picture three bridges you can see what is the num- what is the role of these bridges why these bridges iske upar aap chal to sakte sir taki wo keep in na kar jaye wall jo hai wo बटरस And this is the arch and then the bridge. It's one bridge, second bridge, third bridge, and then the level. It's not a very, very elaborate wall. It's straight flight of steps going down. But in this case, there's a bali in uh, Ahmedabad, much decorative, and it is here from this pavilion that the flight of steps comes, start coming down, and it goes down and down and down. Then, in the case of the Muslims, some of the caravans rails were attached. to the caravans rise and they were built obviously as we discussed in our last lecture on the trade routes of the pilgrims and travelers and the businessmen the travelers could stay and take rest and take their baths and uh, take care of their body etc so these bolis were built on these royal routes and a big mention of these bolis is made by a great traveler ibn batuta he was a moroccan islamic lord scholar and a traveler in 14th century he traveled to india he became the qazi of delhi under the patronage of muhammad bin tughlaq he refers to a number of bodies in northern india built for travelers so that is the small history of this great traveler what is a qazi the judge yes yes the judge jo hota hai wo qazi kehlata hai i remember my great great grandfather uh, was given the title of qazi by the british government to go ko jaj laga diya unhone due to his some qualities so uh, some of my family members are still known as qazis because of that one person so mere bade bhai bhi qazi kehlate the mere father bhi qazi kehlate the but i somehow because i was not a qazi i was not a judge so maine apne naam ke sath qazi nahi lagaya but anyway so coming back to ibn batuta then he wrote a book about his uh, travels and that book about his travel is known as rehla re he he halwe wali re he lam aur phir aakhir mein bhi he jis pe upar do nukte hote hain jisko hum rehlat keh sakte hain na rehlat aur rehla simple mean traveling from one place to another place to jab hum kehte hain ki wo sab rehlat par ma gaye to iska matlab bhi yahi hota hai ki wo is duniya se ऊपर की दुनिया में चले गए दैट इज आल्सो ए काइंड ऑफ ट्रैवल बट रहलत का मतलब ऑलवेज यही नहीं है कि बंदा मर गया हो तो रहला इज द बायोग्राफी ऑटोबायोग्राफी ऑफ इब्न बतूता देन पाकिस्तान क्लोज टू द खरन मीनार देयर इज अनदर प्लेस व्हिच इज नोन एज जंडियाला शेर खान दिस बोली इज सिचुएटेड देयर एट जंडियाला शेर खान एंड आई विजिटेड दिस बोलीज you years back in a very bad shape almost closed nothing is visible ye jo aap pani dekh rahe hain isme it was all closed ye bada afsos hota hai apne monuments ko dekh ke barbadi dekh ke but this jandiala uh, sharham bali it was on the route from delhi to lahore and beyond to kabul uh, shekhupura shadara was the first stage of the travelers the rail train to reach us travel karte the and uh, akbar built this bali so that when the traveling came or traveling uh, parties are moving from lahore to kabul side they could take their first uh, first uh, stay at this place so the bodies were built by him all gone 
So the names sometimes uh, we have to look at why the names, why the bowlings have different names. Sometimes they are named after the place and sometimes they are named after a person. And sometimes they are named because of the, some of the qualities of these bowlings. So these are various methods of naming these bowlings. Some of the bowlings has turned into a garbage bins. For example, I visited a number of bowlings near Ahmedabad and Gujarawala in Pakistan. And they were also in this shape. Now the people are not throwing the garbage into these bowlings, but they normally when they discard the holy text, so I saw a number of those things in these well. This is not appropriate. The best thing is that you burn those paper, the sacred papers, and then whatever the ashes are, put them in the water, which is a flowing water. That is the best method to dispose of the sacred text. So logo is time to use karte. And this is a step well in Patan. Patan is in Pakistan also, but there is a Patan in India also. Mm -hmm.